You've been awarded a Fields Medal for contributions to algebraic geometry. Could you please tell us what algebraic geometry is? A uh, so very simple uh, example would be something like if you have uh, two variables, let's say x and y, and you look at the equation x squared plus y squared minus 1. Uh, the solutions of this polynomial over the real numbers would give you a circle. Uh, but if you uh, look at the same equation over the complex numbers, the solution set actually will be more like a sphere, not a circle. So algebraic geometry, then, it depends on what kind of field you also work on. So a circle is an example of an algebraic variety? Yes, basically. So if you take any more equations, maybe higher degrees, then you get more and more complicated uh, varieties. So for example, if you just, again, work over two variables, and now you take a degree three equation, then in most cases what you get is a, a so-called elliptic curve. And elliptic curves are actually central to number theory. So maybe half of number theory is about elliptic curves. So you see that even just you take two variables, an equation of degree three already, that's a really complicated uh, object. Once some of the work you did was classifying algebraic varieties. Why, why would you want to do that? Yeah, so algebraic varieties are um, then solution sets of systems of polynomial equations. These are the main objects in, in algebraic geometry, just like groups are the main objects in group theory, for example. And to classify these objects essentially means that putting them into different groups uh, so that if two uh, varieties belong to the same group, it means that they share maybe uh, many or some fundamental uh, properties. So it's important to have some kind of at least rough classification so that if you are given a random variety then maybe you can say where this variety would belong and that already gives you a lot of information about uh, the variety. So this naturally ha happens in every field of mathematics that you want to classify your main uh, objects in a way that that would be like the central goal of the subject. Your work was on something called the minimal model program. Can you give us an idea of what that involved? Yeah, so the minimal model program is uh, basically you take a variety and then you try to transform it into something more special. So already if we just work in dimension one, um, these algebraic varieties are called curves. Again, the circle is just an example of that. Uh, but in general, algebraic curves can be actually extremely complicated because their singularities can be really very complicated. What do you mean by singularity? Uh, so singularity, for example, if the curve uh, cuts itself at some point or it just uh, something strange happens. Um, so if you draw an algebraic variety, actually it's quite easy to, to, to just um, uh, see where the singularities are. But you can also calculate them just by the, the equations. Um, now, having singularities makes things uh, always complicated. Uh, but what uh, mathematicians realized already in the 19th century is that uh, given an algebraic curve, you can actually transform it in a not very complicated way into one which is smooth. So no singularities. No singularities. And in that case, what you do basically is you don't do anything at the point where there is no singularity. So in other words, you just remove the singularities and maybe replace it with one or maybe more points. Um, but that is about rational transformation. You are given an object which is very complicated, you replace it with something which is more uh, reasonable. But so these two also share a lot of geometric uh, properties. So in, in a way, that is like the very first step of doing birational geometry or minimum model uh, program. Uh, once you have a smooth variety, and then you can ask, is this really so special or not? And in the case of dimension one, it happens to be yes. That basically gives you a, a unique uh, algebraic variety in the birational class, if you compactify it also. But when you go to higher dimension, just being smooth, it's a great thing, but it actually is not nothing in a way nothing special because there are so many other uh, varieties which are birational to the given one, and they are also smooth. So then we it's natural just to look for something more special than just being smooth. So there are three special three classes of varieties that happen to be really very special, and one of these are called funnels. Basically, they have positive curvature, just like a sphere. And then there are those which have a trivial curvature, like curves of genus 1 or elliptic curves, or in, in higher dimension we call them Calabi Yao varieties. And then there is another type which has negative curvature, and these are 
called canonically polarized, or some people just say uh, varieties of general type. And what happens is that these three type, type of varieties are building blocks of all the other varieties. So in a way, the minimum model program tells that you can reconstruct every variety just by using these three special type of varieties. And what was your contribution to the minimum model program? Uh, so the minimum model program has uh, so many different local and global aspects and problems and, and components. Uh, so to settle the whole program takes a really enormous uh, amount of time and, and effort. I mean, it has been, people have been trying to do that for uh, you know, 100 years, but uh, still we are not <laughs> at the end of the story. Uh, so uh, my uh, particular contributions, there are maybe I just mentioned two of them. Uh, one, uh, one of them is uh, about constructing minimal models for a variety of general type. So they are called variety of general type because they happen to be the most common type of varieties. Uh, so with my colleagues, uh, Kashini, Haken, and McKinnon, what we proved was that if you are given any, any variety of general type, then you can always construct a minimal model. Mean, it means that uh, the sequence of birational transformations will actually end at some point and give you, you a very special uh, variety. So basically this work, which is now essentially known by the name BCHM uh, for people paper, essentially it opened territories that before people just couldn't really dream of. It was just like inaccessible before and then suddenly after this paper, the whole field was open for more research and then, so it's not surprising that it's used very, very intensely by other people. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the stories and the, the, another story was about this final variety that I <laughs> mentioned, this variety of positive uh, curvature and um, what I showed that if you uh, look at variety finals of a fixed dimension and maybe with a mild type of singularity, then they form a bounded family. And that means that you can describe all of them by a finite set of parameters. Your story and journey have been very inspiring to many people. What, what does that mean to you? Yeah, so I basically, until I finished high school, I never went outside uh, Kurdistan. And I even traveled just a couple of times outside my hometown. So that's where I learned the mathematics, that's where I got interested in mathematics, and that's where I decided to become a mathematician. So I was already maybe, I don't know, 15 or 16, I decided to be a mathematician, and I stuck with it. <laughs> uh, so the, the journey was very long and um, full of all kinds of difficulties in, in every stage. Um, but in a way that also made it more exciting. You have more difficulties, at the end you get something, it just feels more exciting, I guess. Uh, but also, uh, in a way maybe, it also becomes an example for people of, uh, of, uh, in similar situations. People who are not very, maybe, uh, privileged to get access to like excellent education. And in that sense, I'm also very happy that this will inspire uh, young people, not only in mathematics, I mean, in basically in really all areas in, of, of education, just judging by all the email that I have got from all kind of people, that uh, I'm, I'm very happy that I, that my story could inspire people in this way. What, what is it like being a mathematician in Cambridge? Well, the Cambridge, uh, of course, has a very long uh, history of, um, of uh, excellent mathematicians. Uh, for me personally, I think the working conditions, the flexibility here is really uh, uh, great. So you know that in Cambridge the terms are kind of compact, uh, they are not very long, and uh, that means that I have more time to travel, for example. It's just there is more flexibility around. And also having excellent students always feels uh, uh, good. So when you teach and you I feel that your students are really interested, they are listening to your lecture, that feels really uh, positive, very good. So th there is always a positive, stimulating environment here, I think.